Well, picture this. You have a great idea, a great business idea, and you believe you can be making millions in a couple of years from now. But the problem is, how do you start? You need funding, right? You need a business loan. So you have a constellation of ideas going through your mind, and you need to think about how to get your first business loan. So in today's conversation, I want to talk to you about how to get a startup business loan with no money. And here is a simple answer to a complex problem. Don't you go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ever ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee, or tea, or vodka, and let's roll. <laughs> In today's discussion, I want to talk to you about how to get a startup business loan with no money. And I'm going to provide you a simple answer to a complex problem. The first thing I want you to do right now, and I want you to take notes. If you're somewhere, you're a founder, and you want to find a business loan for your company with no money the first thing i wanted you to do is to take care of your legitimacy get legit this is important you need to have a legit business if you have a sole proprietorship and you just trying to have, or you have a single member llc your chances of getting a legit business loan are limited okay you really want to have a, a a business you want to segregate your personal affairs from your business's affairs. It, this is really important to have that distinction, okay? So when I'm talking about having a legit business, I'm talking about a couple of things that are really important. First, you wanna think about the legal structure of the company. I want you to choose an LLC, S Corp, C Corp, and whatnot, depending on the, the, the state you're in and depending on your, 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 your preference. It's really important, so you need to have that. Number two, you want to uh, contact the IRS via their website to get yourself an EIN, an employer identification number. This is the social security number, if you will, of a company, okay, that allows you to actually pay taxes and be also be monitored in terms of your compliance with uh, several laws. And this also allows you to open a business checking account. It's important. So see, this is part of you surrounding your business with um, with legality. This is important, important. You wanna take care of business licenses and permits. What I'm trying to tell you is that if you want to get a loan, you need to have some, I would say, veneer of legitimacy, okay? And business licenses and permits allow the banks, the credit unions, or the uh, the alternative lenders who are going to send you money to believe that you are indeed a business and that this is not just a, a hobby. This is a legit business. It's super important. You also want to think about if you have some buzz around the business, let's say you have some press, uh, some press mentions, you know, you have positive media coverage. This is also good. And try to really uh, take care of your social media profiles. So the constellation of things, this is a constellation of things that will give your business a great profile publicly, but also privately. So this is important. Legitimacy. It's really important. Point number one, legitimacy. Number two, I want you to think about assets. So when I'm talking about assets, and uh, the whole thing is you want to get a startup business loan with no money, you want to collateralize the loan, okay? You cannot get an unsecured loan, business loan, with no money unless you have perfect credit. But if you want to get a startup business loan with no money, the best chance for you is to collateralize the loan. In other words, you are trying to have, you, you, you are using the asset that you are buying with the loan, you are using that asset as security for the loan okay this is really and this has been done uh, multiple times for example you can do equipment financing okay so basically you are buying a car you buy, you're buying a business car or you, you you are buying a company car rather or you are buying a, a machine a piece of machinery equipment whatever and you are using the equipment as the collateral for the loan that way the lender sees that hey listen really uh, i'm fine because if something happened i'll just repo the equipment 
and uh, lower my losses if the if you as a borrower defaults on the loan right so that's one option of doing it you can also use invoice financing again when we talk about invoice financing we're using the invoice as the collateral so the accounts receivable becomes the collateral here okay so when you do that you are basically able to get the, the money that you need from um, the uh, invoice financing company and you can actually use the cash for it whatever you want to use the cash for okay invoice financing can be a wonderful option especially if you are not making any revenue yet remember when we talk about getting a business a startup business loan with no money we are talking about at least you are a startup at least you have some accounts receivable let's say you are you are selling to people uh, to some companies some clients and they want to pay you after 90 days after 180 days after 120 days after 60 days or whatever but you need cash now right you need cash now how do you do that sell the invoice to an invoice financing company another option is merchant cash advance this is kind of similar to invoice financing the only thing is you need to have a credit card you need to accept credit cards and debit cards in your business so what you, what's going to happen is that you are going to sell your electronic sales to a business and um what will happen is that the merchant, the MCA lender, will look at the uh, solidity of your accounts receivable or your sales rather and actually uh, advance you money based on the amount of uh, sales you clear every month. See, the whole thing is that you are doing those, you're doing these things without spending any money. You are collateralizing the loan and this is really important, okay? So if you want to get a startup business loan with no money, the first thing is get legit. Second thing is you want to use your assets as collateral for the loan. Third ingredient to this uh, to this uh, problem: credit score. You need perfect credit score. I'm talking about personally, because if you're a startup, you have not gotten the chance to establish a great business credit yet credit score yet right so you need to have perfect credit score i'm talking about because a perfect credit score actually reflects financial responsibility at a personal level and lenders pay attention to that a lot because if you're asking them to give you money with no to give you business money business funding with no revenue you better show something else you better show that you have financial responsibility individually okay and if you have a financial responsibility at a personal level hopefully this will translate into financial responsibility at the business level that's the correlation the lender is thinking about before accepting or denying uh, or rejecting your application okay and if you have co-founders or co-borrowers with perfect credit that's even better the higher the credit score the better okay and when we talk about what is a good credit score really what am i talking about here well good credit score it's something above 670 okay so when we have the hierarchy of a credit scores or FICO scores we are talking about exceptional that's 800 and above right I mean let me start with the poor so poor 579 and below good 679 and 739 very good you have a 740 to 799 and exceptional credit score goes beyond 800 okay so this is something you need to think about so generally a score of 679 i mean 670 to 7 to 700 is great when we are looking at the fico model okay and you can improve your credit score there's always room for improvement i don't care if you are currently around 800 you can still go to 825 830 or 840 as some of our team members have okay it's important to, to to think about that so how can you improve your credit scores there are a lot of uh, a lot of literature around that topic but one thing i want you to do very simply i want you to pay attention to your payment history boss i'm talking to you about paying attention to your payment history right now that's number one your credit utilization ratio number two the number of accounts that you currently have i'm talking about all your credit accounts okay what is your credit history okay you want to pay attention to that to that also what is your credit mix what is the variety the constellation of credit products you currently have open how many hard inquiries do you have what kind of negative credit information do you have in your file what are the derogatory items you currently are you currently carrying do you have skeletons in your closet let's talk about that this is important The fourth item I want you to pay attention to if you want to get a startup business loan with no revenue, 
is to establish a strong NPR with your existing bank. You want to leverage your relationship with your existing bank. Now, let me just say this. It's really important to understand that no bank, no bank will ever lend to you at the business level if you have no revenue. I mean, banks are very conservative. They just own, they really are conservative. Okay. So if you are a startup and you have no revenue, don't expect a bank to lend to you. However, you can leverage your relationship with your existing bank at the personal level to get the to get a business loan in other words you can get a, a personal loan you can use for business purposes but to do that you need to have a strong relationship with the bank at the personal level i'm talking about having a variety of accounts i'm speaking about checking accounts savings accounts cd retirement and whatnot talk to me about that how varied are how varied is your relationship with your bank in terms of deposit accounts those are things we really need to think about those are really really important things do you have a good average daily balance in those accounts i'm not talking about peanuts i'm not talking about five dollars here ten dollars there no you you need to have some cash you need to have some some real dough some real ka -ching, okay and you need to also have an excellent human relationship with your account manager let me repeat that excellent human the emphasis here is on the word human relationship with your account manager you need to know your account manager by first name you need to call him or her on, on a first name basis. Yeah, if you want to leverage the, your, your NPR with your existing bank to and you want to parlay their relationship into a loan that could into a personal loan that could later on be used for business purposes, you need to know that person. I'm not saying you need to know their private life, but you need to be comfortable with them enough so that they can do you this favor, okay? Things are easier though if you get excellent credit. If you have excellent credit, things are easier and if they ask you to use a loan proceeds you can just you can just you can even tell the truth that you are using the loans for business purposes that's not a problem because if you have excellent credit you have already demonstrated financial responsibility right and that you, and they will give you the money so if you have a strong NPR you want to leverage their relationship with your existing bank or credit union and parlay their relationship into a personal loan that could be used later on for business purposes. Number five, let's talk about projections. This is really important. Yeah. And what, what are we talking about? You want to create positive but realistic projected financial statements, boss. I'm talking to you, brother, sister, mother, father. I'm talking to you. I don't I don't care what stage your startup is right now whether it is a brand 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 new business or you've been in business for three months or two months or six months whatever you got to have projected financial statements simply because you're not making any money doesn't mean that you cannot project dream a little bit all right you want to forecast it's as important what are those projected financial statements we are talking about projected income statements projected balance sheet projected statement of cash flows i want you to talk to me about where you see your business three months from now four months from now six months from now a year from now talk to me about that we need to be in a prospective perspective here we need to think prospectively okay it's really important i mean simply because you're not making any money now doesn't mean you're not making any money you, you wouldn't you wouldn't make any money in the future okay so it's important it's important to really have that so when we talk about projections we are talking about short-term projections versus long-term projections short term is anything less than a year in accounting in accounting literature anything that is less than a year is termed short term anything beyond that beyond 12 months is called long term okay so you really need to think about having th three to five years of uh, projections so because the lender is going to look at that the lender is going to think oh wow okay this person is not making this business is not making any, any cash now that's okay but they have ambitions they are really they want to kick ass they want to kick ass one year from now two years from now three years from now everything is on the table it's fair game it's fair game to be ambitious okay and there are some important data and statements that are required for financial projections you have historical financial data the balance sheet of uh, previous years if you don't have them that's fine and the cash flows for pre previous years if you don't have them it's okay the thing that's important is that you need to make sure your projections are realistic 
In other words, you're not just making the sort of crazy uh, projections out there that have no touch with, with reality. No, your projections, your forecast must be grounded in reality. Okay. And if you don't have historical financial information, no problem. If you have no balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, market uh, of previous years, that's fine because you're brand new. You're brand new. Okay. But the thing is, you want to make sure that you take into account market conditions and possible changes. Those you, you, those you can control, those you can see, and also pay attention to working capital line items as you do your protections. When we talk about working capital, we are speaking about accounts receivable, inventory, accounts payable. Those are important because those constitute what? That constitute your operating cycle, boss. This is really important that you really understand that. And those working capital are correlated. There, are, there is a strong correlation between your working capital items and uh, your, uh, there is a category in the cash, cash flow statement called cash flow from operating activities. Very important. I'll be right back, right up this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweet Kiwi Show. I'm still having a conversation with you about how to get a startup business loan with no money. Okay, and I'm giving you a simple answer to a complex problem. Step number six, you want to write a credible business plan. And when we talk about business planning, it's really important, especially if you have no no way to prove income. You have uh, you have no income, as a matter of fact. Okay, and when we talk about business plan, why do we need a business plan if you if we are a startup business and we have no money? Well, first of first of all, the lender is going to look at your business plan to understand that you the founder know the problems that exist in your industry and are able to target those problems. See, because the thing is, you can't be in business if you have no idea, you have you have no uh, you have no clue about the problems that exist, the pain, the pain points that customers have in your industry. Because everything starts with identifying those pain points, right? And solving uh, and proposing solutions for those pain points so you can make money. Because you, because when you do that, you are adding value, okay? And uh, so you are creating a business plan because you want to target your problems, you want to get better advice, you want to organize your resources, whatever, however meager they are, however small they are, you want to organize them because a business plan is what it is a plan, it is a guide, okay? It is a process, okay? And don't try to make things uh, too formulaic in your business plan. Don't try to make things through uh, too complicated in your business plan. Don't try to confuse the reader with uh, some terminology that is uh, jargonic, that is that's pure jargon. Uh, jargon. Nobody needs that. No, you want to you, you want to write a business plan to approach investors and lenders. Okay, you want to create milestones in the business plan, and you want to have also actually a template, a roadmap for the future. Because that's what's going to help you actually get to the profitability level that you need to get to to be able to get more loans in the future. So here are a few things I want you to think about when you think about a business plan. You want to think about the executive summary, the business or industry overview, the market analysis and competition. Yeah, yeah. Sales and marketing plan, ownership and management plan, the operating plan. Very important. Your financial plan and appendices and exhibits okay and really everybody needs a business plan from startup businesses to existing businesses you are able to actually uh, capture what the market is looking for okay and what the market wants and you're trying to make sure and this is important make sure your business plan is grounded in reality it is realistic I, i've said this before and i'm, I'm going to say it again if the business plan is not realistic to you it will, it will not be realistic to a prospective lender. And anytime you write a business plan, you want to actually uh, make sure that anybody uh, in your team or anybody outside your industry reads it to make sure that that business plan passes muster. It's very important because this is how you can actually uh, gradually up the level of credibility that you assign to the business plan. And step number seven. Folks, 
we are still talking about how to get a startup business loan with no money. And step number seven, you need to approach those lenders who specialize in this kind of loan. OK, I've, I've just said it before that uh, usually traditional banks stay away from uh, this kind of loans. OK, they don't want to. Uh, they don't want to. It, 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 it's too risky. If you are a startup, in other words, you have no operational history. And on top of that, you have no money. That's just crazy. They, banks don't want that. So there, but there is fortunately there is a uh, I would say a niche of lenders who specialize in this kind of uh, loans. OK, so you want to seek lenders that lend without income sales or proof of income. In that group, we have Lendio. So Lendio with Lendio, you can you have loan amounts from five hundred dollars to five million. And uh, they want you to be in business six months. In some cases, they will accept you if you've been in business for one month. And they're asking a minimum credit score of 560. The good thing with Lendio is that Lendio is a is a network. It is not a direct lender. It is a marketplace lender. They have uh, more than 75 lenders in their network. And it, when you apply, you have a single application that goes to more than 75 lenders. And so your chances are really multiplied here. This is really good. And then you have Bluevine. So Bluevine, with Bluevine, you have loan amounts from $6,000 to a quarter of a million. And time in business, they want you to be, they want you to have six months. But in case, in some cases, they will accept you if you have three months. Okay, minimum credit score is six hundred. Blue One actually specializes in business lines of credit. Okay, and this is really good because uh, if you can qualify for a business loan, you may qualify for a business line of credit. And again, those are with no money. Okay, with no money, they, under certain circumstances, they, they will accept you with no money. And then the third one, the third player is Fundbox. With Fundbox, you have loan amounts from $1,000 to $150,000, time in business six months, although we have seen people get, get accepted with uh, time in business three months, okay? Minimum credit score is 600. And what we love with uh, Fundbox is they're really fast. They're really, really fast. They'll get back to you and they'll kick, they will start kicking the process. They will kick off the process real quick. Fantastic. And uh, biz to credit is the fourth and last uh, lender in our list today. With the biz to credit, you have loan amounts from twenty-five thousand dollars to two million dollars. Okay, this is really good. And time in business also six months. Although they will qualify you if you have uh, all other uh, parameters uh, straight, they will qualify you for it three months okay and minimum credit score of 575 and they will accept you also with no money assuming that you are able to have a solid application so i've given you here four lenders but there are tons out there four lenders that are solid they will accept you if you if you are a startup and you're looking for a business loan with no money assuming of course as i've said before there are a couple of things you need to do to make sure that your application in the end is solid <music> All right, folks, this is the end of today's conversation. I was talking to you about uh, how to get a startup business loan with no money. And I gave you a simple answer to a complex problem. First, you want to get legit. Number two, you want to collateralize the loan. You want to look for assets. Number three, you want to fix up your credit score. Number four, you want to have a strong NPR with your existing relate your, with the, uh, your existing bank or a credit union, and you want to leverage that relationship and parlay that relationship into a personal loan that you could use later on for business purposes. Number five, you want to make good use of projections. Number six, you want to uh, write a compelling, credible business plan. Number seven, you want to seek the lenders who will cater to the specific niche you are in. Thank you so much for your attention. I will speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.